Chapter 12 Monday, July 17, 0645 hours Will, wake up! Will rolled over and cast a baleful eye at his sister. Beat it, Liss. You're not supposed to be in here. Come on! She dragged him out of the narrow bunk. His elbow smacked Ian on the back of the head as he splashed to the deck. The water was now well over his knees, halfway to his waist. Ow! The younger boy sat up. What's going on? Yeah! stormed Will. This better be good, Lissa! Radford's gone! Gone? scoffed J.J. Where could he go? Out for a stroll? He just disappeared, she said. Maybe he fell off the boat. I couldn't get that lucky, grumbled Luke. Besides, Ratface is a career sailor. He'd never go overboard, not in calm seas like this. Up on the deck, they found Carla waiting for them. Notice anything missing? she asked. You mean besides one psychopath? J.J. retorted. She pointed to the rigging around the foresail. There hung the inflatable lifeboat exactly where they had stowed it the day before, but the phoenix's twelve-foot wooden dinghy was gone. He must have sailed off in the middle of the night, took the GPS, too, and most of our food. He left us? Ian asked wide-eyed. All alone? Impossible, Will insisted. Nobody's that rotten, not even Radford. Doesn't make sense, said Luke. Why would he set out in a wooden bathtub? Surely it's better to stay on a sixty-foot boat. Not exactly in mint condition, Lissa put in. The masts busted, the bowsprit's useless. Not to mention the cabins are full of water, added Carla. It took a few seconds for the truth to seep down. We're sinking, cried Will. That's why Radford split. Water's coming in faster than we can pump it out, and he knew. Shocked silence followed. All six waited for someone to speak out, to say, Of course not. That's not what happen what's happening at all. Here's the real story. But the facts were undeniable. They had pumped all day to lower the water level, and in the morning it was high again, higher even. The schooner was leaking, sinking, and they were on their own. Heart pounding, Luke thought back to the moment yesterday when the mate had gone from his usual loud mouth bullying self to quiet, sullen, and withdrawn. In that instant, Ratface must have made up his mind to desert them. He might well have signed their death warrants. What chance did six inexperienced kids have on a sinking boat? The unfairness of it suddenly seemed so weighty that it threatened to crush him. He was only here because he trusted a false friend with his locker combination. Never in Luke's wildest nightmares had he imagined it would cost him his life. That's Gumball, he said finally. Oh, no, breathed Lissa. Carla sat down on the deck, her head in her hands. It's all my fault, moaned Ian. I messed up his name. I got him mad at us. Hey, Luke grabbed him by the shoulder. You don't leave people to die because somebody made fun of you. God, to do something like this, you've got to be evil. So what do we do now? asked Will in a daze. We just sink? And that's it? That's what Radford must think, Luke said seriously. If we make it to some port and tell the story of how he deserted us, he's in big trouble. In his mind, we're already fish food. He's right, gasped Will, fighting back tears. How do you know? Lissa snapped angry. He's a sailor, he yelled. He knows a sinking boat when he sees one, idiot. Not now, commanded Luke. We have to think. There must be something we can do. We can pump, Carla ventured. Radford knew that, Lissa pointed out, and he still split. But it'll buy us some time, Luke argued. Every gallon we pump up out must mean a few more minutes before we sink. Now, what else have we got? The foresail, said Ian. We never raised it, but it's ready. And the engine, Lissa added thoughtfully. I could be wrong, but it's just wet. Wet? cried her brother. It's under water. We pump out the engine room, take the motor apart, dry it out. Her eyes gleamed. Maybe I can put it back together again. This isn't your science fair project, Will exploded. It's real life. Well, have you got a better idea? She shot back. 
J.J. shook his head. <clears throat> Could I just say something? One by one, he looked them in the eye. No offense, but I've never seen such a bunch of total saps in my life. Oh, no offense taken, Lou said unkindly. Seriously, J.J. persisted. I mean, don't you think all of this is a little too convenient? Luke looked daggers at him. No, I think it's pretty inconvenient that Ratface left us for dead in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, and when the boat sinks, that'll be even less convenient. The boat's not sinking, scoffed J.J., and Radford didn't leave us either. Will was confused. Then where is he? The actor's son shrugged. On another boat, just out of sight, watching us through binoculars. And you know who's with him? The captain. You're sick, stormed Luke. The captain's dead. I saw him go over the side, and so did you. J.J. chuckled. <laughs> The special effects guys who work on my dad's movies, they can make anything seem like anything. The captain's death, the sinking boat, Radford's disappearance, they faked all that. But why? Carla asked in a small voice. To see how we'd react under pressure, J.J. explained. That's CNC's whole gig. Cooperation, teamwork. They're probably watching us right now, making notes on what we say and do. I'll bet they've got hidden cameras and microphones all over this boat. You know what, said Luke. You're crazy. I'm the only sane one here, J.J. replied coolly. I've got news for you, Luke told him. You're not the center of the universe. Nobody's watching you through hidden cameras. If this boat sinks, you're going to drown along with the rest of us because the ocean doesn't care who your daddy is. That's your opinion, J.J. said smugly. If you guys want to break your backs on those pumps, then be my guest. I'm on vacation. If anybody needs me, I'll be working on my tan. And before their shocked eyes, J.J. Lane spread a towel across the cabin top, flaked out on it, and surrendered his body to the sun's rays.